Hey everybody and welcome back to Lining Up Ducks. This is our very first video of a new series called Carpool Q&A where I answer your questions at the speed of my life which with four kids is always on the go. I've got my carpool buddy in the car with me today. She uh, loves the girls carpool so we've got her in the car with us today and we're going to answer all of your questions. So I've taken a lot of your questions from our last big giveaway that we did and I've broken them up um, and just going to kind of answer the most frequently asked questions first and then I will work these um, and I'll work my way down the list. But definitely leave me your questions for the next carpool Q&A in the description box below and that way I have a lot of questions to keep this series going. Okay. So I think the number one question we get most often is why did we move to an RV? And that's kind of a really long answer. I probably need to do a whole video on that, but I guess the short version is um, I wanted a simpler life. I wanted a, uh, my kids were spending way too much time watching television because we were either in a neighborhood or in an apartment and I would have to go outside with them uh, because you just can't let your kids run around these days anymore. And when we moved um, from our last big house, I really wanted to downsize. We lived in a 2,700 square foot house and we probably used, I don't know, maybe a quarter of the house, you know, on a regular basis. And I just felt like we were wasting money. So when we moved out of that house and we um, changed to Scott's new job, we moved across several states, we um, wanted to live smaller in an apartment. Well, we're a family of six and the states, actually several states, um, occupancy requirements would not allow us to live in a two bedroom apartment. We wanted to live smaller so we could save money and um, you know, try to really figure out what our financial goals were and so we could really attack them, but it wasn't an option. So the only option that we had were the more expensive um, apartments and our apartment rent ended up being $1,600 a month, which was um, really high. We had a really nice apartment in a nice neighborhood, uh, I mean in a nice area, but all you could get were three bedroom apartments. I think the cheapest three bedroom apartment we could have gotten was like $1,300 a month. So, but we still, we moved into 1,600 square feet and we thought we were going to need all of the 1,600 square feet of space. And again, it turned out that we didn't. So several years ago, um, the Lord really was working on me to, uh, through the parables of the pearl, if you are familiar with the Bible, um, to really sell everything and just live simply and see kind of where that took us in our life. And when we were not really able to, you know, save as much as we wanted to or, you know, do as much with the kids as we wanted to because our rent payment was so high, we decided to go for it. And I mentioned it to Scott and, you know, cause I talked to him about it several years ago and, but we would have done it wrong. We would have done it with debt and, you know, we would have had a big payment. So it wouldn't have saved us any money. So we decided to do it different and save the money in cash for the RV. And that way we had no payment. I just, we were ready to have no mortgage payment ready for our kids to be able to run and play and have adventures of, you know, just being a kid and being able to get into mischief and get themselves out of it. And so we just decided to go for it. We set a savings goal of $35,000 and we didn't end up needing that much because we found a great deal on our RV. We paid 17,000 for our RV in cash. And if you've seen any of my videos before, you got to watch that whole savings journey. We started our savings journey in, um, I started my channel in December and we started our savings in December and we bought our RV in July. So we saved, not only the 17, but we also saved all the money for the renovation. So we've saved $25,000 in about six or seven months for the RV, which at any other point in our life would have been laughable. And it's just, it's wonderful that it 
I just, it, it was such an accomplishment for us. So I guess that's kind of why we moved to the RV and this is just, it's such a loaded question and, and I know one that y'all have really been wondering. So I, I can go into more detail, but um, I may have to do a whole video on that one. But okay, so how, how much is the lot rent? I have notes down here of y'all's questions. How much is the lot rent for your RV? Okay, so a lot of the questions have been, are we gonna travel or are we staying put? So we don't have a truck to pull our RV with. So my dad um, pulled it into our spot for us and pulled it home from uh, Ohio from us. So if you saw our um, you know, journey to go get our RV, our trip video, uh, and that was the before tour as well, before the renovation tour. Anyway, we don't have a truck. So we would love to travel one day, but that's a really big expense that right now is not on our radar as far as financially. So my husband is uh, military. He's actually a, it's, it's a strange thing. It's, he's a mil tech. So he wears uniform every day to work, but he is a GS employee on the pay scale. And he's also in the Army National Guard. So we are pretty much permanent station where we are. So we are right now living on um, an Air Force base, even though he's Army. We're living on an Air Force base and in this just beautiful campground. I mean, it's gorgeous. We're talking 20 acres, a lake, two playgrounds, a dog park, woods to play in. It's just gorgeous. And it's about 475 a month for our lot rent. And that includes all of our utilities except for internet. So that has been just an awesome, just awesome. And we have no payment on our RV. So all we pay, all of our expenses, as far as our housing expenses are the 475 a month. And it's just so freeing. All right, how do your kids like living in an RV? Uh, that's hilarious, they love it. I mean, everybody, a lot of people in our family were very negative about us moving into an RV. Um, they just didn't think the kids would like it. They thought we would miss the um, space. And yes, occasionally we do the excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, as we're trying to get around each other. But it is, we love it. The kids love it. In fact, when they're being bad, I threaten them with going back to an apartment or a house and they're screaming no at the top of their lungs. They love it. Their stress level is less significantly. Um, anxiety levels are less. They are watching like, uh, I don't know, an eighth of the television that they were watching before where I just used it as an escape, but now I don't have to. They may watch two movies a week if it's raining now and uh, where before it was like, a, it was the daily. See, the TV was on every day and it's not on every day anymore in our house and it's just wonderful. They're less cranky. They get to play outside. They get dirty. They're really kind of figuring out what they like and there's a lot of kids. All of the parents have the same rule that you can't go into somebody else's RV. So it's just wonderful. We just, I, it's, a sim, it's a more simple life. And I am finding peace and, for the first time in many, many years. And we just, we love it. Um, okay, so I'll also go into more, that more detail if y'all are interested more in that. But um, how old are my girls? My girls are um, eight, six, four, and three. So we have four girls and they are all within five years of each other. So uh, it's been wild and crazy. <laughs> it's a wild and crazy journey. And my last two were 13 months apart. We call them the gruesome twosome. And they are, they're hilarious. Okay, let's see, let's get into a budgeting question. Um, how do I keep my spouse on budget? All right, so this is definitely a, a big pain point for a lot of people. Um, getting your spouse on board with budgeting. And, you know, we really had trouble with that in our early marriage. And what was the just fix for us was giving each other personal money. And that has been a non-negotiable in our budget, no matter how much money we earned or didn't earn. Because there has been time, there have been times in our life where, you know, we, we qualified for every benefit that the government had available to us. We weren't in a position that we could actually take them, but buddy, I wish I could have. 
Um, so we give ourselves personal money and that is no questions asked, uh, personal money. It includes his lunch money for work and my lunch money for work. I get the same amount, even though I'm a stay at home mom and it includes, uh, mad money for the month. I think right now our lunch money is $20 a week, which we've done less at times, but we've done more at times as well. But our lunch money is $20 a week and our mad money is $40 a month. So we get about $120 a month each and that is no questions asked. I mean, I could go and raid Hobby Lobby to my heart's content and Scott's not gonna say a word. And Scott can go, you know, raid a hat shop or a men's, you know, consignment clothing store to his heart's content. And the only thing I occasionally do is remind him that clothes, that socks and underwear have to come out of his clothes budget. He also gets a clothes, we just recently put a clothes budget back into our budget for Scott and I. So uh, he does have a little bit more there than he did before. But that's how we, that's how we do it. And as we are um, choosing goals together, he's more and more involved and more interested in being involved. I really started listening to what he wanted in our budget versus what the experts say you should work and in what order. And it made him so much more involved you know, in, in our budget, it's been unreal. It's, we've been married 17 years and he has been just, he's been excited about it. It's been wonderful. So the biggest suggestion I can give you is give your spouse personal money. And if you don't know how much, I always say start as a percentage of income, especially if your income fluctuates, because then your amount of personal money fluctuates. We do a fixed amount because that works for us. It's just easier for my brain and the math every month. Uh, but, you know, one of these days we'll get to where we can have a little bit more personal money. But right now, that's kind of what it is. Okay, have you ever considered homeschooling? Yes, I get this question a lot because we pay for private school for our kids. Um, we have tried uh, public school twice in two different schools, in two different districts, in two different, no, not two different states. Um, and both times it was it was a hot mess and a bag of chips. So I don't think there's anything wrong with public school. I think public schools are fantastic. I think there's some amazing public school teachers. I think there are some amazing teachers. We just have not been lucky enough to get the right ones for our children. And we have tried homeschool. And when we lived in Texas, I homeschooled for a year and my kids were, let's see, they were six, four, two, and one. And it was mad crazy. I mean, mad crazy. So I decided to take a step back and we really, that's when we put them back in public school for the next year. And we did great as far as the learning goes. I love the flexibility of homeschool. Love the flexibility of homeschool. But I am also not an extremely structured person because of my ADD and I'm just now really learning how to, well, ADHD. I'm just really learning how to manage it as an adult. I kind of quit learning about it and just always treated it how I was treated as a child. And I, so I consequently never developed any coping skills. And so I'm really taking the time to learn about my ADHD and how to best manage it in my life. And that's what you see in a lot of my planning, my life planning videos are me trying different things to see how it works for me and our, and as I'm narrowing down what works best. Um, what works best for our my ADHD and then our budgeting style. So I would love to maybe eventually go back to homeschool, but right now I'm not healthy enough with my autoimmune disease to keep up with four kids at home, especially for small children. So we might revisit it again at, at a later date, especially if that's something the kids are interested in doing. But another reason we chose private school is because of Sophie's venous malformation, um, we do early intervention treatments, which if you've seen our budgets, you see that we save for her um, treatments every single month. Um, we save for the travel that we have to go. We have to do 
surgery every three months and then it's it's about twelve hundred dollars every trip for just the travel expenses so um with her venous malformation being so prevalent on her face we really wanted her in a smaller environment that was going to be centered around love and um just her to be able to grow up with the same kids from the time she was little to the time she graduated high school because her condition will change drastically as she goes through puberty. So we just really kind of wanted her uh, in just a more, in a, in a smaller environment. So bullying wouldn't be so much of an issue because of the way she looks. All right. Last question, because I'm nearing my house, is, um, let's see, okay, how far ahead do you plan your budgets? And you're, I'm working on this video now. Ooh, hang on, I've got to go through the gate. Pause. So we plan a budget outline or a budget plan for an entire year. So you will see in... Uh, an upcoming video series that I'm working on right now. Sorry, it's kind of a dreary day. I don't have a whole lot of light. An upcoming video series that I've got working right now that as to, I'm going to take you through us planning our year in advance. Now, I do not get our budget. We do a zero-based budget, and I do not get that down um, to zero. I get it kind of close, you know, kind of within $100 or $200 or something like that. That way there is some wiggle room in every month for, a, you know, that kind of stuff. But I try to plan out everything a year in advance. And since I have started doing that, oh my wow, our budgeting has just flourished. It has absolutely flourished. It takes a lot of uh, planning ahead and there's a lot of work, you know, on the front end of doing a annual, I call it an annual spending plan, but it is so wonderful. I have just, our budgeting has flourished, our finances have flourished. It's been wonderful. So definitely tune into that series. I should have the first video up probably in the next two weeks. Uh, that way y'all have plenty of time to plan your year for 2021 and you can see all of our planning in advance. All right, everybody, that's it. I, I'm so glad you joined us for my first carpool Q&A. This was so fun. So leave me your questions in the description, in the, not the description box, the comments below so I can answer any of the questions that you have. I'll be able to answer it looks like, you know, depending on the length of the answer, five to 10 questions. Um, every carpool Q&A. So I will try to do one of these every week. And the thing that I love the most about my channel is interacting with y'all. And I can do that with these Q&As. I love it. So um, it is always a joy to have you in my life. And I'm so excited that you are taking this journey called life with us. And I will see you in the next one.